perfect utopian, and two women made it happen. Now, I've been studying, as you heard, women's history in Scranton for over five years, and I've only scratched the surface of a very large story. What remains to be done? So very much. No one has studied women's missionary societies formed in the local Episcopalian and Presbyterian churches. Scranton was sending women to India, China, and Latin America during the early 20th century. What their reports could tell us about local women's experiences in foreign places. Where are the reports? We must find them. There's a new medical school in Pennsylvania being constructed in Scranton. It will represent another chapter in the history of medicine in Lackawanna County. Old histories of Scranton carefully name historic male physicians like Isaiah Everhart, James Wainwright, and Benjamin Troop. Barely anything is said about early women physicians, about the visiting nurses whom you see in this slide, and nothing is recorded of substance, of substance, on the nurses' training schools that were established like the school at Lackawanna Hospital seen here. What about the nursing matrons that virtually ran alone, Scranton's first hospitals? Or the story of Scranton's nurses during the flu epidemic of 1918, and nursing labors stateside and abroad during two world wars? What an evocative photograph of this service conducted for nurses at graduation. It's taking place in St. Luke's Episcopal Church with each graduate dressed as Florence Nightingale. I want to know what this service was all about, don't you? We have to find the documents. You know there is a nursing history in Scranton. I found bits and pieces of data. I'm stringing them together, and I'm looking to my colleague at the University of Scranton, Dr. Marian Farrell, to help research this important topic. There's also the story of the American Red Cross and the women who made bandages during two world wars, and the story of the Women's Motor Corps, the nurses' aides, and a canteen run by women. What is the story of women at war in Scranton? Were they not fighters, too? Where are the records? And did you know that Scranton from 1888 through 1904 was state headquarters for the YWCA movement in Pennsylvania? And that Scranton was, at that time, the only city branch of the YWCA? All of the other branches were in colleges where young women conducted prayer meetings and socials and continuing education courses. The Pennsylvania YWCA was born in the home of a Scranton woman and had its national headquarters in Chicago. Scranton's YWCA hosted suffrage meetings and birthed the first business and professional women's clubs in the city. How can we write women's history in our region without studying the YWCAs in our communities? Now, at this point, I'm wondering if Wyoming County has birthed such women as these. Educators, artists, philanthropists. I haven't even discussed women lawyers, physicians, and businesswomen. Wyoming County, I challenge you to find the lost ladies in our shared regional history. But I must warn you at the outset, you won't find these women in books or through online search engines. This research is more difficult, but what I have done in Scranton can be done here in Tunkhannock. I wonder if anyone in the audience knows some of this history already. I'm looking, I'm hoping. Perhaps we can begin the search for women's history in Wyoming County today. Why not right here? Why not right now? Why not, Tracy? Thank you so much for the information that you shared with us. And as our audience members are preparing to ask their questions and share their stories, I'm just interested to know about 
the difficulty of doing this research. You talked about records being destroyed and you said that if we want to study these women, we're not going to be able to Google them, we're not going to be able to find them in a book for the most part. How have you been able to collect the information that you've done when it's been so difficult to find the records? I guess I should say with difficulty. Um, the most important source that I've found that is, at least gives me an outline for research are the newspapers. So I will read newspapers from all of the Northeastern PA communities, page one to page eight or 10 or 12, uh, looking for any news items on women. Then I check archives of any women's organizations that still survive. Uh, I look for letters that are written uh, that families may have. Uh, it's, it's really an archeological dig is what it is. Sounds like a lot of legwork for sure. We've got someone here from our audience. Tell us your name and your question or comment for Dr. Dunn. I'm Sandy Bazoric, and I don't really have a question, but I just don't think we can do a program like this in Wyoming County without mentioning one of the local women here that I think is quite remarkable. Her name is Dorothy Colbinson. She's well into her 90s now. And a long time ago, Dorothy decided, because of her interest in local history, that she would do a history of every single house in Tunkhannock Borough. And she did it. When I wanted to know more about the old house that I own, I was told to give Dorothy a call. She invited me to come to visit her at her home. And she had a box beside her with the history of every home in the borough written out in longhand. Wow. She was able to give me not only the history of my home, she gave me the history of every house on my block. <laughs> um, my mother-in-law's house on the next street. Um, she, gave, she also included clippings from the local paper that contained lots of really interesting historical information about my house and the other houses um, in the general area. And, um, I just think that was such a remarkable accomplishment. It must have taken her years and years to do, but she just kept at it, and she shares this information with anybody who wants it. She allowed me to take her original materials home with me to copy. I asked her if she wasn't afraid of not getting things back, and she said that it only happened once. Wow. And she was very generous with her time and with her materials. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And Dr. Dunn, that really is a remarkable thing. As you said, no internet. I mean, this woman spent a lot of time researching a lot of different locations. You will find, too, as you, as you study local history, that there are many, many unnamed local women historians like this that have been pulling this information together, and here we are finding them. This is great. Dr. Dunn, uh, in your comments, uh, I was troubled uh, somewhat by your suggestion that here in Northeast Pennsylvania, perhaps, we have not done as well, maybe as other areas, in maintaining historical records uh, so that we have those as a treasure from which to draw our research. Is that true, or, or would you say that compared to other parts of Pennsylvania or the nation, for example, here in Northeast Pennsylvania, the records just aren't there anymore? Um. I haven't done enough study in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh to actually answer that absolutely, you know, with a, an absolute answer. But I do know from my own research that we are sadly lacking in documents. Um, documents have left the county, left the region. Um, to study the YWCA, you have to go to Massachusetts, our YWCA in Scranton. To study Cornelia Bryce Pinchot of Pike County, we have to go to the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. We know that there are some records that actually women have burned that uh, we wish that they hadn't. Uh, is it worse here than anywhere else? I don't know, but I, I do, my, my, my thought is that it's definitely worse than in, in Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. The records have been kept there better. Ours have left, and I'm finding lots and lots in, ba in attics and basements where water and heat damage are doing their worst. We've got to find them and bring them out. Hi, your name and your comment or question for Dr. Dunn. My name is John Kecker, and I was wondering if in the case of the women you were talking about, you know whether the men in their lives, husbands or fathers, were particularly supportive or particularly critical of what they were doing. 
The story of women's history is also the story of, of wonderful, supportive men, I have to say. Many of these women could not have done many of the things they couldn't have, or they did, without the support of their husbands. And I, I don't mean financial only. I mean men who were quite progressive in their thinking and wanted their wives to continue to uh, be philanthropic, to be involved in cultural organizations. So when we say women's history, we have to do it with a, a nod to the husbands who stood staunchly behind these women. Hi, your name and comment or question. My name is Mark Mitchell, and let me first say thank you to Dr. Dunn and to the Pennsylvania Humanities Council for visiting Tunkhannock today. As president of the Wyoming County Historical Society, I am very, very sensitive to your comments regarding writing things down, looking for lost records, trying to preserve what written history and material objects we still have. One of the foremost chroniclers of history in northeastern Pennsylvania was Emily Blackman of Montrose County. I was wondering if you would comment a little bit about her life and her career and all that she did to preserve so much of the early history of our area. Emily Blackman is, is an extraordinary woman. She was uh, technically deaf, uh, the daughter of a, of, a, of a physician in Montrose. She was well-educated, um, a wonderfully curious mind, and she decided to set out and write the history of Susquehanna County. She did, and this remains the still the base text that we use for the study of the region. And of course, because the boundaries between counties were so fluid then, what she writes of Susquehanna has something to do with the other counties around, so we all owe Emily Blackman a debt. Um, she wrote a history of Susquehanna County that has, to my way of thinking, a very tremendous appendix. And in the appendix, she writes of the labors of the women of Montrose during the Civil War. She gives us a good accounting of the ladies' aid societies there that sewed and canned and did everything possible to support their boys in blue. And when the war was over, uh, she went down uh, to Mississippi and became a teacher in the Freedmen schools. Um, she never got proper credit for her text. In fact, uh, a rather impecunious, I'm sorry to say, male uh, decided to write his history of Susquehanna County and um, got more credit for his than she got uh, for hers. But she's a remarkable historian. When you think that deaf with a hearing companion, she rode in a buggy between Montrose and Harrisburg to get documents to write what is a very complete history of Susquehanna County. She's, she's a heroine. Well, thank you, Dr. Dunn. We are learning so much from you and from the members of our audience as well. We want to take a short break now so that we can fill you in a little bit on what's going on with the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. Not too long ago, PCN's Brian Lockman sat down with PHC's Ann Benzel to talk humanities. Ann Benzel, you are currently the chair of the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. What is the Pennsylvania Humanities Council? The Pennsylvania Humanities Council is a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to promote the humanities and cultural events throughout the state. What does that word mean, the humanities? Humanities has many different meanings to different people. But to me, uh, my definition would be the humanities are those elements or entities that touch us in special ways in our everyday lives. For me, uh, it's the arts, it's literature, it's history. The humanities are learning experiences that teach us a lot about who we are, where we came from, and hopefully where we're going. And how does the Pennsylvania Humanities Council promote the humanities? Through programming. Uh, we have some absolutely wonderful programs that um, are far-reaching across the entire state. I'd love to tell you just a little bit about them. One of my personal favorites uh, are the Commonwealth Speakers, who really visit every county in Pennsylvania, telling stories, uh, small performances. Uh, another absolute favorite is Read All About It. And this uh, is through the library system. It encourages not only reading, but discussing what you've read. Another great program that we offer is a grants program. We offer uh, grants to local organizations to support their programs and also to assist in bringing our programs into the area. How often do you have these events? We are part of partnerships within the community, uh, weekly, monthly, seasonal. It, it depends. Check our calendar. It's listed at 